Welcome to the Morning Beat. It's your girl, Michaela. Now, I never thought this day would happen, but I found him in the parking lot. I chased him down. I said, Lord, get over here. I am so happy because many years ago, I got to work with one of the most incredible human beings, and he's in studio with us. I'm here with three-time Emmy Award winner and pioneer in reality television, a driving force in the world of performing arts as the creator, executive producer, and judge on So You Think You Can Zance which has won 15 Emmy Awards and developer and former executive producer of American Idol, my boss of 2004, Nigel Lithgow. Welcome. Thank you very much. And could I meet the person who wrote that for you? <clears throat> well, I wrote it myself. I'm Excellent. very good at writing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well I, I want to get to it because there's one question that's on everybody's mind. Um, do you think I should have won season four of American Idol? If I'm honest and, and you know, I, I'll upset a lot of people. Mm-hmm. No. Oh, great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Please. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> American Idol, I have to tell you, you changed my entire life. You know that. I feel like it was just yesterday. But um, when you teamed up with Simon Fuller, you developed and produced a show that was nominated for nearly 70 awards. What made you sign on to American Idol? Um, well, there was, we had a show called Pop Idol in England, yeah. which was spotted by Rupert Murdoch and Fox. Uh, and the story is, you know, that's out there is that Elizabeth Murdoch called her dad up and said, you've got to see this show, which is a not true story. It's fake news. What happened was the, the ratings for Pop Idol were doing so well in the UK that Rupert called Liz up and said, what is this show? What's going on? Should we bring it to America? And Liz said, yes, but if you take it to America, you really should take the English judge and don't sort of sanitize it in this sort of American way of talent shows because there was never really any hard facts given to contestants in the past on American shows. If if they said, for instance, we don't like your singing or, or your singing isn't strong enough, but goodness me, what a beautiful dress you're oh, wearing. Yeah. And so it was always couched, if you will. Whereas Simon Cowell, as you well know, said, your voice sounds like a bag load of cats being thrown off the Empire State Building <laughs> and go and sue your singing teacher. You know? <laughs> I know why God created earwax. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, that was such a risk, though, because it did work in England. But like you said, everything was so PC in America. And still, quite frankly, I think it is. It's gone back that way, for sure. It, it yeah. definitely has. Did you think it would be the phenomenon that it was? Well, when I was asked that question by Mike Darnell, who was the head oh, of... I love Mike yeah, yeah. And he was the head of alternative programming at Fox at that point. Um, he said, is this going to work? And how, how do you think it's going to work? And at that point, Fox were doing all of these shows like When Animals Attack, Busted on the Job when TV executives get drunk. You know, there were all those type of shows. Uh, and so it takes this, a lot of talent to get those shows. I, it certainly just takes a lot of talent to get them commissioned nowadays. <laughs> um, I said, it's a real family show. And, and it's a show that brings families together. And at a time when there's like a proliferation of televisions all around the house, so even though you can be watching television, you're not watching it together. People are in different rooms watching what they want to watch. I said, this show will bring people together. Yeah. So your, your demographics will just change from this sort of 18 to 49 so that grandkids and grandmas and everybody in between that are going to come together and watch the show. I obviously didn't believe it was going to be as successful as it actually became. Came. Yeah, it was. You know, it's interesting, though. It seems that so many have tried, but there really hasn't been a singing competition that has found the same success that Idol found, not even particularly the new Idol. Why do you think that is? Um, I think people have forgotten, to a certain degree, what the show was all about. And it was always focused on the contestants yeah. uh, where in, in my tenure, as it were. And although Simon Cowell was a star of it, he was a star of it because he focused on the contestants. He wasn't sort of lying on the desk or playing around or having a go at anybody apart from the contestants. So you always had a focus on the contestants. I think, you know, with a program like The Voice, which I think is a great program and a really good format, yeah. but it really benefits the judges. 
the judges themselves are having fun, and that's what we enjoy about it. The banter here in the US uh, and in the UK, Jennifer Hudson and Tom Jones sing a great deal, and they're on the judging panel in the UK, and, and they'll sing their little hearts out. And it's great. You know, that's, that's a different type of show. Idol was a springboard and a platform for people like yourself that you know, couldn't get arrested. You know, you go along to auditions and you get turned down. And if you remember, Kelly Clarkson was in Los Angeles three months going around record companies and singing before she had the opportunity of coming on American Idol. Yeah, I think she was living in her car. She didn't even oh. have a, a, she had nothing. Yeah. And it was really, truly, it was even before social media and, and YouTube had taken over. You really had just one way. Well, you didn't have texting. No. Texting was, you know, the the big thing in Europe. And we came here and said, well, people can text vote what's that uh, and so it was just telephone calls yeah. and again in england the re the television companies charge something like 50 pence for a telephone call and that goes into the coffers of the television company mm -hmm. that couldn't be done here because your telephone lines that um, you can pay for are, are porn lines so you can imagine Did kids. You say porn lines? Porn. Porno. Pornography. Okay, good, yeah. good, 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 good. Yeah. And so you can imagine some kid calling up and voting for you and getting, hello, little girl, what are you wearing? <laughs> Listen, I wouldn't you know, have cared. It's, it's... I just needed the votes. Call yeah. whoever you will. <laughs> Clearly. Um, oh, I want to ask you. Now, you worked with so many idols, but you started tapping at 11. That's what you did. You've worked with Gene Kelly and Bing Crosby. Was there a moment where you specifically remember watching Idol and thinking to yourself, I can do this concept again, but with dancing? Or was that an idea that you had even before doing Idol? Well, I must be honest. It came from Simon Fuller again. Simon Fuller said, look, I created um, uh, American Idol for singers. Your background is dancing. Uh, as well as television, why don't we do the same thing for dance? And I said, don't be silly, that'll never work. Um, there were no dancing shows on television right. in this country. The amazing thing was that Dancing with the Stars and So You Think You Can Dance came out in the same year without either one knowing mm -hmm. that it was going to happen. Um, so I didn't believe that people would be as fascinated with dance um, as they were with, with singing. Thank goodness I was wrong. You were right. And we want to continue no, talking. No, I was wrong. You, oh, you said you were wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't think it would work. Well, thank God you were wrong because it did. You're on season 16 of So You Think You Can Dance. So some things, you're celebrating your sweet 16 uh -huh. and you've changed so many lives. We're going to continue talking about So You Think You Can Dance. It airs Monday, 9, 8 central on Fox. We are with Nigel Lithgow. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Morning Beat. It is Michaela, and I am so thankful to be joined with Emmy Award winner and pioneer in reality television and creator and judge of So You Think You Can Dance. It is the 16th season. It's airing Monday night, 9, 8 central on Fox. Nigel Lithgow, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I love your So You Think You Can Dance. Well, that's how you say it. Dance. I don't know if you knew that, but that's how it's called dancing. Dance. Mm -hmm. mm. It's That's what you say when you're a terrible dancer, but you want people to think you're better. Better than you are. Well, I'm from Liverpool and we say dance. You say dance? Dance. Dance. Yeah. You don't say anything like but that. Don't know. Don't. We used to talk like that all the time, you know. Like this? Yeah. I like to dance. No, no, that's more Barbara Streisand. I'm more John Lennon. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Just give me one more. <laughs> uh, well, you know, used to talk like that all the time. All right, it's at the back of the throat. Yeah. You Ladies know. and gentlemen, live from the dead, we've got John Lennon in studio talking about So You Think You Can Dance. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we were talking about American Idol because that's where I got my start with you and you have created so many incredible shows like So You Think You Can Dance, Dance since then. Now, everyone knows you as a judge and a mentor and a businessman, but more importantly, you are now a grandpa and you've got five beautiful grandkids. Uh, how do your grandkids describe you and what activities do you do with them when you're just being Papa Nigel? Well, they're all scattered around the world, so uh, I don't really get to see them all that often. Uh, I have a granddaughter who is a beautiful ballerina, mm. uh, Domini, and she is in Stuttgart in Germany at the Stuttgart uh, Academy there wow. under the supervision of John Cranko. Uh, he's a brilliant choreographer and, and, and teacher. Um, I've got uh, George, who's in England. He's 11, and he's just been signed by Chelsea Soccer Club. Oh, my God. Um, uh, which, so they've obviously got good feet, both yeah. of them. Uh, not dizzy feet. Good not feet. dizzy feet, good feet. Uh, and um, one of them um, is in the 
uh, university in Australia because three of them came from Australia. Um, Kyan, Tig, and Dominic were all born in Australia from my son Simon. George and Leo were both born in America from my uh, uh, youngest son, uh, Chris. So that's the sort of way it works. So Leo I see a lot. He's four. Uh, and he enjoys playing football as well. Oh. And, and he's started tap lessons. <gasps> you and, couldn't be a more proud papa. <laughs> well, no, he's rubbish at it at the moment. And he's going to have to be a lot better than that. Get rid of him. Yeah. How embarrassing. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, if you guys are just tuning in, we are with Nigel Lithgow from So You Think You Can Dance. It airs Monday night, 9, 8 central on Fox. Now, with your grandkids, they're obviously doing so well. But if one of them came to you and said, hey... Papa, I'd like to be on Idol, or so you think you could dance. What advice would you give them? Um, go out and get some talent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's okay. Uh, when we started Idol, as you well know, it almost became a rite of passage for kids. And if I remember being in New York, and there were hundreds of kids asleep on the pavement for three <gasps> days. Yeah, I was one of them. On, on the pavement? Really yeah. Slept on the pavement. Uh, and it was a rite of passage. I've been, you know, I was, Simon Cowell was rude to me. Wasn't yeah. that fantastic? Yeah. You know? Uh, and then I think people started to realize, hey, this is a little bit more than just a bit of fun uh, because we lost a lot of the bad ones. Uh, and then we only ever took in these auditions, you know, we only ever took the very best that we came across and the very worst. And we wanted to show a cross section of each city. And when we were at Dallas Cowboys Stadium or something like that, there were like 75,000 people there, of which 45,000 were auditioning. I mean, it was it was just incredible. And out of those, I think Simon and Paula and Randy saw about 40 or 50 a day. Right. So it, it, it was a real bloodbath, if you will, yeah. of, of, of saying to people, no, no, no. What do you think has changed in reality television and these competitions uh, from 15 years ago when Idol was at, you know, its greatest heights? Because <clears throat> that was my season. And uh, now, so you could... Oh, was that the season you were in? I think that was the lowest rated season. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's weird because that's not actually what I was told. Mm. Uh, Carrie Underwood just texted me and so I was like, uh, I've n I have not heard from her since my season. So yeah. thank you very much. That is a lie. <laughs> she is a liar. Jesus did not take her wheel. She's Jewish, so that's fine. Um, <laughs> what is the difference between the 15 years? Do you think a lot of it, like I said, does it go back to social media or people having so much access now to whatever they want? They don't feel like they need to... to necessarily pay the dues that we all had to pay. Well, I think, you know, if you asked a kid years ago in my generation, what do you want to be? It would be a, a train driver. Then it became, I want to be an airline pilot. Then it was, I want to be an astronaut. And nowadays, it's if you say, what do you want to be? I want to be famous. And you go, oh, what do you want to be famous in? Oh, it doesn't matter. I just want to be famous. Right. Uh, and that's quite frightening, you know, because that leads to so many things. That becomes infamy as well. Uh, you know, when people shoot people so that their name will be remembered. Oh, it's horrible the way that that celebrity side has gone. Uh, I'm really not happy with a lot of reality television that I think is partially scripted nowadays. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm uncomfortable with it. Yeah. Well, you've done a lot in your career. You did start from the very bottom to the very top. But what keeps you going? I mean, you could quit at any time. You've done so much. You could just hang out with your grandkids and relax all day. What makes you keep going back? I need the money. Yeah, I agree. Well, you're looking a little raggedy, <laughs> so I can see that. I love it. I, I love working. I, you know, I've got the best job in the world nowadays. I don't have to do anything but sit there and watch other people's talent. And I'm a sort of talent vampire. I suck in their energy and their talent, and I love that. And, and to feel responsible for somebody's career that comes out of it, yeah. I'm very proud of that fact, you know? Yeah. You're responsible for a lot of people's careers. If you guys are just tuning in, we're with Nigel Lithgow. You can catch him judging on So You Think You Can Dance Monday nights, 9, 8 central on Fox. When we come back, I want to dive right into this new season. A lot has changed. You've got some new judges. I auditioned. Um, I didn't get you aired. Did, you did great. You, <laughs> really, you did great. I auditioned. For a woman with no dance talent, you were fantastic. <laughs> For a woman with dizzy feet, she did very good, and we're going to talk about it. Stick More around. of a dizzy head. <laughs> 
Welcome back to The Morning Beat. It's your girl, Michaela, and I am so thankful to be joined with Emmy Award winner and pioneer in reality television and creator, judge of So You Think You Can Dance, season 16, airing Monday nights, 9, 8 central on Fox. We are with Nigel Lithgow. Now, we got very personal. We talked about your grandkids, and we talked about how you feel about reality television. Do you have any shows that you just binge watch when you don't have to work, or are you just sick of TV now? Uh, No, I binge watch a lot. Yeah, I, 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 I love, um, obviously, Game of Thrones. Oh, my God. Okay, how do you feel about the finale? And I'm I want a gonna, real answer. I'm not going to discuss it. Fine, I'm not going to discuss it either. All right. I thought it was terrible. That's it. That's I'm, all. I'm not saying anything. Me neither. <laughs> I think I think the plot was lost a little book when, uh, a lot when the books ran out, and then they had to continue to write it. Yeah. Uh, but, listen, it was a great job. It was a great series. And the whole country was talking about it. Oh. What else could you ask for? It was the, my favorite show. We loved it, and I loved it. Yeah. But another one of my favorite shows is So You Think You Can Dance. Thank you. You're season 16, and there are so many really fun, great new things. But what's different about this season than we've seen in the past? Well, I, I'm asked this question a great deal, and, and I always say the same thing, which is the talent. Yeah. Uh, that's that's what changes every single season. And if you enjoy dance and if you enjoy watching people's journeys, then that changes every season. Um, we have upped the ante a little bit this season. We've got a brand new set. And we're using this incredible um, technique. It's called Time Slice with 120 cameras in a circle around. And they all go off at the same time uh, as the person jumps in the air. And then the computer links them all together. So it gives you a 360 degree journey around the kid frozen in midair, which I love. I think we tend to overuse it a little bit too much yeah, because we love it so much. Yeah, it's a new toy. It's a new toy. Uh, But uh, it it is a a remarkable device. Yeah. Well, joining you on the judging panel, uh, we're with Nigel Lithgow, judging on So You Think You Can Dance. You've added Dietrich and Lorianne Gibson. Now, I love Lorianne. I think she's so great. I remember her back in the day on MTV. But how is it happening? Making the band with uh, Diddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she was so great. And she was so cool with the other girls and so talented. And she's tough. That's yeah. what I love about it. She, number one, she knows what she's talking about. Yeah. And not just in hip hop. She's done every genre of dance. She was trained uh, in Alvin Ailey school. So she's a great dancer herself and choreographer. But she doesn't hold back with either her generosity of saying you were fabulous and wow, that's what dancing's all about. Or with being tough and saying that's just not hitting it. That is just no good. You, you, you're you not getting the essence of what hip hop is all about. So I, I love the fact that she's as honest as she can possibly be without being rude, because I insist on this program that we try and help the performers. If they're not good enough, you can tell them why and what they're missing. Yeah. It's not like American Idol, whereas if you were tone deaf and you came and you sang badly, uh, which you didn't, by the way, um, you come <laughs> back next year and you're still tone deaf. Yeah. But with dance, you can improve. So Twitch, for instance, came back for three years on the run and finally got in. So that's what I love about being able to assist the dancers in saying, you need to look at straightening your legs or pointing your toes or you need to get more of a core, uh, which you can't do with singers. You, yeah. you, you just sing flat and, you know, it sounded awful. The the tune was in there somewhere. You sang all the right notes, but you put them in the wrong order. <laughs> well, if you guys are just tuning in, we're with Nigel Lithgow from So You Think You Can Dance. I love that advice. So maybe differently than American Idol, you could say two dancers tuning in, I'm sure, right now, if you don't make it the first time, please do come back. Absolutely. Continue coming uh, back. Absolutely. And besides that, they're working with incredible choreographers, which we would they would never get the opportunity of doing so. Yeah, yeah. Can we so, talk about some of the choreographers yeah, in season sure, 16? Sure. Who are we looking at? Who are we excited to have? Uh, Mandy Moore. Uh, she knows. Incredible. I, we had her on American Idol. Yeah. Uh, uh, with uh, Originally, she was with, um, who's, oh God, who's the lady from Dancing with the Stars? Who? The judge. The lady oh, judge. Oh, Carrie Ann Inaba. Carrie Ann Inaba. She was Carrie Ann Inaba's assistant. Oh, wow. Uh, and and she, as you rightly say, I brought her into uh, American Idol. Yeah, she's great. I'm so excited. Well, you know, I do feel like 
you are very compassionate and you do just want to teach and you do want to mentor. Um, you've been a champion and an advocate for so many unknown talents, but you've also really helped a lot of LGBTQ youth share their stories uh, along with their passion for dance and music, which is important. You know, we're an LGBTQ radio station. Uh, what advice would you have for maybe someone who wants to audition but is afraid to show probably the most important thing on the show, which is their authentic self? Um, well, there's a difference in, sh in in showing your authentic self when you're being spoken to and when you're playing the part of a partner. And if you are very flamboyant uh, and you're given a girl, to, if a guy is very flamboyant but is given a girl to partner with, I need him to be very, very strong. He has got to lead that girl and he can't just flounce around. So I don't care what he does when he's being spoken to by Cat or, you know, bring out your personality, but you are playing a part the minute that you are a performer. And that's really important to play that part. And I've got into trouble for saying that over the years as well. Uh, and you know, I was called homophobic at one point. And I thought, my God, if I was homophobic, I'd have never been able to get start dancing right. when I was 11, for God's sake, you know? Yeah, that's interesting because I've never seen that. I mean, you're good friends with RuPaul. You're such an ally to the community. You are on our radio station, obviously. And, and so much of music and dance is all different types of people, but it's an opportunity that you've given all types of people and we couldn't thank you enough. I'm so excited about season 16 of So You Think You Can Dance. Nigel Lithgow, you have to watch. It's 9, 8 Central on Fox. I'm going to ask you this again and I'm not going to let you out until you answer properly. Okay. Should I maybe have kind of possibly won American Idol? No. Excellent. Thank you so much. We are the new channel Q on your radio and radio.com. <laughs>